Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein were homies. They were not blood brothers, but maybe another uh, substance brothers. They got they were very tight. And we know that this week from a number of, of um, in fact, we've been knowing that for, for a while now. There's a lot of evidence supporting Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein's friendship. Um, but this week, things got a little crazier. A number of allegations of Donald Trump's sexual assault, as well as now, um, Michael Wolff, who is a journalist and an author who has a, a new interview um, with, um, I believe, with the Daily Beast, where he's basically says he's got all this recording um, of Jeffrey Epstein talking about his relationship with Donald Trump. And in fact, the reason that he knows so much about Donald Trump is thanks to a formerly alive Jeffrey Epstein. So let's get into that. Um, let's just start off, I guess, with this audio. Um, now, apparently, Michael Wolf, and I'm a little bit like, okay, so we are five days before the election and he's coming out with this now, which I'm always like, you know what? Can people just, can people just tell us earlier? That would be great because you know what? Then that would, instead of just make a lane and a name for Michael Wolf, allow other people to also do investigating. Um, you could bring in some of the amazing journalists in Florida who helped expose Jeffrey Epstein as a sex trafficker and who interviewed the now older women who were trafficked by Epstein and Jelaine Maxwell. Jelaine Maxwell, again, serving a prison sentence over that. Jeffrey Epstein was serving a prison sentence until 2019, when, strangely, he um, committed suicide, which, of course, makes sense if you're trying to avoid any accountability for your crimes, but also doesn't make sense if the crimes you committed were alongside some of the most famous and powerful and wealthy men in the world. And you might have a lot to, I don't know, trade against those men were you to ever testify about your actions. No doubt you would have had to serve time yourself, but maybe your time would have been lessened. You might not have died in jail. So again, um, that is of course only the stuff for the lowest, the scum of the internet to debate. That's only for wingnuts and weirdos. And yet, will I remind everyone how seriously the mainstream news took the Jeffrey Epstein stories before he was, before he killed himself? Before he killed himself, we talked. they talked about it on MSNBC a lot. There was a lot of CNN interviews. There was a lot of interviews about just how um, expansive and awful and manipulative Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking ring truly was. It was a ring, people. And then when he killed himself, all those stories went away. People just stopped covering it. And you could say maybe the story ran its course. It's a little bit... It, I'm not saying they're in on it, but it's just like, just because the person killed themselves doesn't mean it's not still a story. In fact, it only deepens the story. Um, but I digress. Let's actually listen to some of this audio. So Michael Wolff, uh, the explosive chronicler of Donald Trump's four years in the White House, has released what he says are recordings of Jeffrey Epstein, who died in 2019, discussing Trump's then White House team in detail. Wolf released a tape on his podcast, Fire and Fury. He says it was made in a restaurant in 2017, most probably in the Soho branch of La Dre, a patisserie in Manhattan. Epstein can be heard speaking over the din of diners. So I just want to play this for you, and then we'll read more, some of the more explosive things that he said. Um, all right, let's take a look. Listen to this. Congressman Okay, first of all, first we're going to have to listen to a bunch of Jimmy Gomez BS. And I will take this opportunity to tell you um, that Jimmy Gomez has been supported by a bunch of APAC money. Jimmy Gomez is a Democrat. He is in the 34th district in California. He um, fancies himself a progressive. He is someone who released 
a um, a flyer that said he was endorsed by Bernie Sanders, even though he hadn't been endorsed by Bernie Sanders. We're going to get into Jimmy Gomez because you just saw a pre-roll ad for all of Jimmy Gomez's, like all the amazing things he did. Now, if I refresh that page, I would be served another ad that said how terrible his the person he is running against, progressive candidate, actual progressive candidate David Kim is. All of those ads are brought to you by APAC. And the Prospect Magazine did a deep dive into it. So I want to talk about that in a little bit, especially because he's in my district and I am very much supporting Jimmy Gomez, um, who is someone who stands against the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. But here is the recording again. Jeffrey Epstein telling Michael Wolff October, uh, no, 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 excuse me, 2017, two years before he died, about the inner workings of the Trump administration. Remember, Michael Wolff, had a lot of intel into the Trump administration, and it was unclear how he got that. Uh, how how he got that intel? One of the convers from I think we have a snippet from one of the conversations that I recorded with Epstein, and I think this was in a restaurant in 2017. His people fight each other, right? Uh, and then have outsiders. He sort of poisons the well outside. He will tell 10 people Bannon's a scumbag and Priest is not doing a good job and Kelly has a big mouth. What do you think? Jamie Dimon says that you're a prop and I shouldn't keep you. And I spoke to Carl Icahn and Carl thinks I need a new spokesperson. So Kelly, even though I hired Kelly Ann's husband, uh, Kelly Ann's just too much of a wild one. And then he tells Bannon, you know, I really want to keep you, but Kelly Ann hates you. I have more than dozens. I, I probably have a hundred hours of Epstein talking about the inner workings of the Trump White House and hmm. about his long-standing deep relationship with Donald Trump. Okay, so that's him saying I have hundreds of hours of of tape of Jeffrey Epstein telling me all about the inner workings of Donald Trump. Now, <clears throat> I'm no sleuth. Um but when someone is running their mouth about you, um Number one, it says a couple of things. Number one, it says he knows Donald Trump personally and deeply and intimately. He's basically explaining to Michael Wolff there his strategy at being a good boss, which is playing all of his employees against one another. And I think any of us who's ever led a team can testify to the efficacy of playing all of the team members against one another and how much you truly get done when you just talk shit behind their backs. Um, and it's a great way to run a country. I mean, great way to run a business and great way to um, run a country. So not only does he know, he clearly talks to Donald Trump. He's telling Michael Wolff, this is Trump's strategy. This is what he does. Whatever the outcome is, it's to probably just, you know, drive fear into the hearts of the people who work with him. Play Kellyanne Conway off of Steve Bannon. Play Steve Bannon off of Carl Icahn. Play these different powerful figures against each other. So this is him explaining that. But it also tells me another thing. If you've got hundreds of hours of Jeffrey Epstein running his mouth about Donald Trump, don't you think Jeffrey Epstein is a little bit of a liability for Donald Trump to say nothing of the fact that this was before the wall started closing in and the cases started coming um, and the allegations and the case proven cases of sex trafficking that then came out afterwards. But it's a little bit of a head scratcher. And not that there are people who are MAGA voters who are listening to me, but if you are, hey, do what you did about the vaccine and uh, the horse dewormer that made you shit your pants in the line at Target. And do your own research about the connections between Donald Trump, your almighty Lord and Savior, who you think will go after pedophile rings in the basements of pizzerias, and Jeffrey Epstein, an actual convicted sex trafficker. Um, but here is more. Um, this is uh, by Newsweek, who... Um, you know, listen to the entire uh, interview that Michael Wolff did with the Daily Beast. 
um, and sort of details the kind of the biggest aspects of it. And I thought this was a really good summary. Um, author and journalist Michael Wolff has made a new series of claims surrounding the relationship between former President Trump and F Epstein, including what he described as their competitive playboy lifestyles, allegations about a real estate deal in Florida, and a claim that embarrassing photographs of Trump were found in Epstein's safe. Yeah. Remember that one? I think we sort of forgot about that. Again, this is all lewd, and why should we be covering it? Wolf, who has written a number of books about Trump, discussed the friendship between the Republican candidate and the late convicted sex offender, sex trafficker, on his Fire and Fury podcast. The episode was released on Thursday, just five days before the election. My guy, release it earlier, you schmuck. Below, Newsweek has compiled five key moments from Wolf's podcast. Newsweek has not independently verified these claims and has contacted Trump's team for comment via email on Friday outside of business hours. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they're, they'll be right on it. Uh, the chimps will get there soon. Wolf did not speculate that Trump was involved in the sex trafficking and other crimes committed by the billionaire financier for years, but he did say that the former president would have been aware of girls being at Epstein's home. Yeah, we know that because he said that openly. He says he likes young, he likes girls. He loves the women, especially of the younger type. Wolf said that Epstein was his, quote, secret source when he wrote his trilogy of books about Trump's time in the Oval Office. Wolf's books, I mean, this whole time we thought maybe Wolf had just like, you know, said nice things to Kellyanne Conway or just hung out. Because you remember Wolf had this Fire and Fury book. I thought that was Woodward's, but I'm, I'm confusing Woodward and Wolf's. Well, you know, Wolf sold massive amounts of copies of the Fire and Fury book. And everyone was like, how the fuck did he get this information? Epstein. Wolf's books on Trump have been questioned over their accuracy previously and were dismissed by White House Press Secretary under Trump from 2017 to 2019, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who said at the time that Fire and Fury contained mistake after mistake after mistake. She questioned Wolf's integrity, saying, I think you have to look at the author's track record before referring to the book as tabloid gossip and full of lies. Wolf has said his reporting is backed up by dozens of hours of audio recordings of senior staff. Wolf said these new claims stem from nearly 100 hours of interviews he conducted with Epstein before the latter died by suicide August 2019 while awaiting trial on sex trafficking charges. Epstein's death in 2019 left numerous unanswered questions regarding his associations with powerful figures, including Trump. Though his death was ruled a suicide, a portion of the public has remained skeptical about what actually happened. Even Epstein's lawyers have challenged that ruling. I mean, isn't there videotape missing surveillance footage missing from the time that he was supposed to have been killed himself? Isn't, wasn't the, one of the guards taken off duty at that time? You guys know better than I do. Come on now. Epstein said Trump had no scruples. Wolf re frequently makes reference or makes frequent re reference to how and why Trump and Epstein became close friends in the 80s. I think they saw themselves as embodying this moment, which was money, women, and status, Wolf said. We see Epstein as a sexual monster, but certainly, at least in Epstein's telling, he and Trump were, in this regard, brothers in arms. Wolf added, yes, valiantly fighting the fight of groping as many William women as possible. Wolf added that Epstein believed that he could hang around with a vulgarian Trump to make his actions appear more reasonable in compromise. I certainly never got an indication that Epstein was questioning himself, but in fact, he seemed to regard Trump's behavior as somehow proving that his own was far more reasonable. He said Trump has no scruples. So Epstein saying that Trump has no scruples. Now, I don't take anything Epstein says. Like, I, I don't think, you know, this is what the right will say. Oh, why should we believe these people? Why should you believe Michael Cohen, even though he literally worked as Donald Trump's private fixer for decades. Why would we believe him? Well, that's exactly why. But also here, this is pure like sociopathy. Like this is a sociopath saying, well, look, me trafficking 17 and 16 year olds to massage people at my home and then looping them in, in a sick and twisted, like guardianship and grooming them over years and years um and 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 paying for them to basically be my sex slaves um 
that is nothing compared to Donald Trump. Like you've got to be a pure sociopath to believe like that. That's like, this is the level they were at is like, as long as we do this together, you know, uh, we have uh, deniability and also like you make me look less crazy. Cool. I, you make me look less crazy. <clears throat> Wolf said Trump and Epstein were essentially in competition over who could maintain the biggest playboy lifestyle, including sleeping with the most women. This was in the 80s. Models were the sexual currency of the time, Wolf said. The author also said that Trump and Epstein had a competition over who would be the first to sleep with the late Princess Diana of Wales. My guess is neither. There was one point in which they had a competition about who would be the first one to sleep with Princess Diana. Now, I don't think that ever happened, Wolf said. These guys were playing the highest stakes they could play. There was a constant betting about who could get what girl first. And then the status thing was about what money could buy and what it could buy in that gold-encrusted Trump real estate sense, Wolf added. Epstein saw, quote, money laundering in Trump deal with Russian oligarch. Okay, so this is, this is an interesting aside, but shows their competition and also... Donald Trump's deep um, relationship and ties to Russian kleptocrats. According to Wolf, Epstein had placed a bid on a house in Palm Beach, Florida, around $36 million, and asked Trump for advice about moving the property's swimming pool. The former president is then said to have, quote, gone around Epstein's back and bid $40 million to, for the house, Wolf said. Epstein knew that Trump didn't have the money, therefore Epstein's conclusion with it was that he must be fronting for someone. And in fact, in that classic money laundering setup, Trump bought the house for $40 million, bought it through borrowed money, and then the house was put on the market not long afterward and immediately sold for $96 million to one of the oligarchs in the close Russian President Vladimir Putin circle. So beautiful. Epstein pleaded guilty to soliciting prostitution for minor in 2008, just a few years after he and Trump fell out. So again, that was like never forgive for Epstein. Like, you can go behind my back and um, assault a woman I've assaulted, but when you outbid me to launder Russian money, pff, I draw the line. Epstein, uh, just a few years before he and Trump had a falling out, Wolf said Epstein believed his legal issues arose because it was Trump who first dropped a dime on him. In other words, Trump ratted him out. And Trump would have known about the girls because he was in and out of Epstein's house, Wolf said. In 2019, Trump said that he had a falling out with Epstein. I haven't spoken to him for 15 years. I was not a fan of his. That I can tell you. That's what Trump said. Obviously, we know that's not true. But this is the craziest part. Apparently, I mean, just like the debunked steel dossier that, of course, we're not supposed to believe, but some of us hold a candle out for the idea that, yes, Vladimir Putin has compromise on Donald Trump. Um, video of him jerking off while two Russian prostitutes pee on a bed that Obama once slept in. I mean, it it, it is believable knowing what we know about Donald Trump. Wolf said that while interviewing Epstein, the financier would occasionally bring out dozens of photos of Trump from the late 90s. Some of the photos featured Trump in Epstein's Palm Beach house, surrounded by young women, added Wolf. And the young girls are topless. And in some of the pictures, they're sitting on his lap. And then there's one I especially remember, this is Wolf saying, where there's a telltale stain on the front of Trump's pants and the girls are pointing at him and laughing. <laughs> Wolf added he would retrieve these photos from a safe at his home. Quote, and I would say it was likely they would have been there when the FBI, at Trump's FBI at that point, not to put too fine a point on it, raided Epstein's house and took the contents of the safe in 2019. People, Frantifa, Romans, countrymen, I am no conspiracy theorist. I believe the greatest conspiracy is capitalism. I believe the greatest conspiracies are patriarchy, are the Supreme Court. Um, I believe the greatest conspiracies are here every single day when we can't make a livable wage, when we um, have to pay through the nose for health care. I believe that the conspiracies that we must change and fight against and organize around are constantly around us, and we don't need to go searching for some 
rich guy's vault to find the conspiracies. That being said, did you hear what I just said? It was Trump's FBI that raided Epstein's house and took the photos of Donald Trump naked with young girls and one with a stain on his pants. Again, I'm no detective, but I think that mean. Guys, Donald Trump used the FBI to cover his tracks with Epstein and maybe didn't, probably not, but definitely probably had him. What do you want us to say? What do you want us to do with this information? Now, again, this is not corroborated by other media outlets. And I would, you know, if Trump is reelected president, all of this shit doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> it's a done deal. It's a done deal on this. And but no matter what happens in this election, I would hope that serious journalists would actually ask Wolf to listen to these tapes. I would ask, I would have him interviewed by uh, uh, other people than his own fucking podcast. Because if there are photos of Donald Trump with Epstein that Donald Trump's FBI raided, you know, that took, then where are them photos? Where are the photos? It's like, you know, we're not crazy here to be like, this is very clear. And that's what Wolf is saying. I'm sad he's saying it now. I wish he said it, I don't know, four years ago. You know, here, here's a great time. Here's a great time to do this. Perfect time. Uh, February 2021. The insurrections just happened. Every single rat off the ship is like, I didn't like him anyway. I never, I was duped. I thought the election was stolen. Well, I didn't know you couldn't do that, officer. Like every single rat is jumping ship. Every single rat is trying to protect their ass. Every single rat in the Republican Party is like, Bill Barr is like scurrying and scurrying, stops to eat a bite of cheese, running, running, running. Then you release this. Then you say, hey, by the way, your God Emperor, your Lord and Savior also was really tight with Epstein and I have all of the tapes to prove it. In fact, Epstein was my source and I'm not, not convinced that Donald Trump also had Epstein's killed and raided Epstein's safe for photos of himself. Just like, anyway, okay, but if we needed more, hey, this is cute. Epstein and Trump shared a girlfriend. Gross. Wolf said the two even shared a girlfriend. Quote, I think Trump was envious of Epstein's girlfriends, which included actresses and models. This includes Stacey Williams, said Wolf, the former model who alleges Trump groped her in 93 after Epstein introduced them. That was news that broke a week ago. Williams said the incident was part of a twisted game between Trump and Epstein. Um, obviously, Carolyn Leavitt uh, said no. Uh, that's uh, Trump's spokesperson. This was always part of the admiration that Trump had for Epstein. And in fact, there was a moment in which they actually shared a girlfriend. Wolf said they were both openly, possibly proudly going out with the same girl at the same time. Wolf did not reveal the name of whom that woman uh, who dated Trump and Epstein at the same time in the moment. In that moment in time, there was a particular kind of sexual excess and license and rich guy masculine cruelty that was not just allowed, but celebrated. Yes. Donald Trump is every 80s villain asswipe. Every do you know who my father is? Rich guy, I will sue you out of existence. Lifestyles of the rich and famous. Fucking um, big perm on your blonde, tall model. But the big bazongas. It's a big, big blonde model with bazongas. I like big model with bazongas. Like that. That was the 80s. If you weren't alive for the 80s, bless your heart. Bless you. I'm serious about that. And number two, it was just, I like big model with big bazonga. Black people are scary. Must release crack into the inner city to control them. Like that's that was the 80s. 
It was, I mean, Sesame Street was basically that. Um, so, so that's what Wolf is saying. Those are the biggest takeaways according to, um, Newsweek. I did want to share, um, oh my God, this is, this is an ad that is still going and I cannot get past it. Okay. Um, here is former model, that former model who, again, um, Donald Trump said, uh, excuse me, said Donald Trump groped her in front of Jeffrey Epstein, who she was dating at the time. Um, her speaking to CNN about that. He was in front of me. Uh, he pulled me into him and his hands were just on me and didn't come off. Former Sports Illustrated model Stacey Williams says that Donald Trump groped her more than 30 years ago in Trump Tower with the later convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein watching and smiling in the room as it happened. Then the hands started moving and they were on the, you know, on the side of my breasts, on my hips, back down to my butt, back up, sort of then, you know, uh, they were just on me the whole time. And I, uh, sorry, I froze. Williams has not spoken out about the incident extensively until now. And in her first on-camera interview, she tells CNN the most detailed accounting of the incident yet, alleging that in 1993, Epstein, who she was briefly dating at the time, brought her into Trump Tower. This context made no sense because the hands were on me and then he and Jeffrey just kept talking and like looking at each other and smiling. After leaving Trump Tower, William said that Epstein berated her for allowing Trump to touch her. I just had this really like sickening feeling that it was coordinated, that somehow the whole thing was, I was rolled in there like a piece of meat for some kind of weird twisted game. Soon after the encounter, she severed ties with Epstein and said she was unaware of the kind of predatory behavior that would come to light in later years. She also says she received this undated postcard from Trump delivered to her modeling agency by courier shortly after the incident. Stacy, your home away from home. Love, Donald. See, I love that kind of shit where they, I like how they, like, each time he leaves, like, a calling card in his dumbass, like, sharpie ass, big fucking handwriting, where you're like, when he can be like, I never met her, no idea who she is. Stacy, I hope you enjoy my hand all over your body. Like, like that, like, anyway, never heard her. And she's got the fucking evidence. Who would have thought that she would have kept that after all 30 years? I'll stick to my stomach. Williams says she did not tell anyone about the incident for over 10 years. I felt a wave of shame and I just couldn't think about it, face it, talk about it for a very long time. I put it in a little box inside of me, turned the key, locked it. CNN has spoken to three friends of Williams to corroborate her story, who each said that she told them about the incident with Trump and Epstein in 2006, 2015 and 16. The Trump campaign has denied Williams' allegations, calling it a fake story contrived by Kamala Harris's yep. campaign. No, Williams even worse. Account only Kamala any. Harris is a time traveler. And she, you know, when you time travel, you can be invisible, like um the guy in that movie, The Invisible Man, but not the like the really good book. Um, about like race relations in America, but um, the guy like Kevin Bacon when he like fondled the booby with no, but he was invisible. Yeah, like that guy. But he went over and Kamala moved Trump hand onto the the her buttocks and then moved it up and down, and that um that's how that anyway. Um, next question to the lengthy list of women who have alleged that Trump groped, kissed, or assaulted them. Trump has also denied those allegations. Trump, who was close friends with Epstein, once calling him a terrific guy, has long sought to publicly distance himself from Epstein since he first faced charges related to inappropriate sexual conduct with underage girls in the mid-2000s. I was not a fan of Jeffrey Epstein. Williams has been engaged as a Democratic volunteer for decades and shared her story on a Zoom call on Monday at a Survivors for Kamala event, Whoa. supporting the vice president's run, <clears throat> although the group is not affiliated with the campaign. I felt like that was some sort of sick 
bet or game between the two of them. With the election less than two weeks away, Williams arguing that her decision to speak out now was not driven by the presidential campaign, but with the release this week of a documentary about Sports Illustrated, one she participated in two years ago, during which she briefly alluded to the incident. Hmm. What do you say to those critics that say this was politically motivated? I can't control when that documentary comes out. I can't control the fact that it's premiering two weeks before the election. And she says she could not stay silent any longer. It takes a lot of guts and you have to really prepare yourself to be ready for that onslaught. And, and I'm ready now. Just bring it. Good for you, girl. Good for you. Um, that's that is uh, so that's one that is one connection through a woman. Um, but this uh, is another um, that just happened uh, 48 hours ago. Um, ugh, so many ads on the Daily Mail. Ugh, gross. They're just so OK. I can't I cannot deal with this many ads. We're going we're going to pocket everybody. If you guys don't use pocket, um, I'm trying to get a, a sponsorship by them one day because I love them. Um, it's basically it's like a little plug in for your um, browser and you can save. Um, stories with no ads and it, and you can also save stories to read later they even have an audio function anyway just a little tip from me to you i love pocket um anyway uh a beauty queen a swiss beauty queen uh and of course since it's the since it's the daily mail they're going to talk about it like this donald trump jumped on a blonde six foot one pageant queen grabbing her body everywhere after inviting her up to a suite at his new york hotel for a private talk now okay without reading the whole thing her name is beatrice kuehl um, she says that basically the fact that she was tall as shit allowed her to fend him off. She basically pushed him away. This is when Donald Trump was openly like Epstein had, you know, his money and his connections and his like, I'm going to get young, usually like poor and working class women to get other poor and working class women to work for, you know, $50 or $100 as masseuses in my homes. This is my little ring. Donald Trump was like, yeah, I'm just going to create a beauty pageant. Why don't I just create the Donald J. Trump New York beauty pageant and uh, get a bunch of, you know, 18 and 19 year olds legal. Granted, uh, they had clearly he had a line. He preferred the 18 to 20 and and Jeffrey Epstein, you know, the 14 to 17. Um, but he was like, yeah, yeah, he, I'm just going to do this above board. Um, let's just invite them all to Manhattan. So that's where this woman who was a banker at the time, and she's now in her 50s, um, what was like went. She was a part-time beauty queen. She went up to his suite because, of course, someone was like, hey, Domenica Trump wants to see you. And she went. Uh, and now we all know, big red flag, never do that. And he groped her and she finally was able to get away from him. And the reason she's coming out with it now is because she actually found her, I believe it was an old plane ticket um, for her trip to New York. And it was sort of like all flooding back to her. Um, <clears throat> the biggest part about this that's relevant to the Epstein stuff is that she, like Epstein also tried to lure her into um, his little disgusting orbit. Um, Kuhl also claimed that pedophile financier Epstein was close to Trump, attended pageant events, and repeatedly tried to convince her to join a party at Mar-a-Lago. Quote, Epstein was insisting to pay for everything, the flight, the accommodations, so that I would come and join them at the party. Nothing else interested him, she said. He was very explicit. He said, you know, I can take care of you. We organize many parties with Don. I take care of everything. He was really insisting. He said he's organizing the party at Mar-a-Lago with Don. It was clear he was some kind of henchman. I thought if he wants me that badly to come, he wants me to do something for that. Trump has admitted he knew Ep Epstein. Um, he once called him a terrific guy. And so here is the plane ticket in the itinerary from Zurich to Atlantic City. Oops. Um, that she says she found more recently that sort of reminded her that all this was actually happening. Let's just leave this story because there are better stories. I mean, we've got five days before the election, but let me just say, the week before an election, we are having a, is Donald Trump a Nazi? And was he BFF slash then, 
the enemy of and maybe had a hand in his demise um, with one of the biggest sex pest sex traffickers we've ever known. Um, Jeffrey Epstein. Like, I don't know. Maybe I am just a... Uh, just a, a, a crazed lib who is not connected to the real man and like where everyone's really at. But my guess is your average voter doesn't like either of these things. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.